Today, we are going to look at a body vis brain builder about the brainstem and Alzheimer's. Often compared to a computer, the brain is capable of conducting many times more simultaneous functions than any computer constructed so far. The brain is composed of three basic subdivisions, the cerebral hemispheres, the cerebellum, and the brainstem. In this brain builder, we are going to focus on the brainstem and look at each of the four divisions of the brainstem, which are the diencephalon, the mesencephalon, which is also called the midbrain, the metencephalon, also known as the pons, and the myelencephalon, which is also called the medulla. Let's begin with the myelencephalon, or the medulla, which is the most caudal portion of the brainstem and extends from the foramen magnum of the skull to the caudal portion of the pons. The medulla is the location of several important physiological centers that serve to regulate the cardiovascular and respiratory systems. The metencephalon, or pons, is located between the mesencephalon and the medulla of the brain. The pons is a relay center and consists of neuronal processes communicating with the cerebellum, pontine nuclei, tegmentum, and the spinal cord. The mesencephalon, or midbrain, is the smallest and least differentiated portion of the brain. This portion of the brain is composed of many relay centers concerned with processing auditory and visual reflexes, regulating motor function, communicating with the spinal cord, and being a relay center for the various brain centers. The diencephalon is the most rostral portion of the brain stem and is composed of four parts, the epithalamus, thalamus, hypothalamus, and subthalamus. Now that we have looked at the brainstem, let's learn more about Alzheimer's disease. Alzheimer's is a disease that has perplexed researchers for decades. One thing that researchers do agree upon is the damage to the brain caused by Alzheimer's disease begins at least a decade before alterations in the memory or other cognitive functions appear in the patient. Next, we will look at the symptoms, causes, and treatments for Alzheimer's, and finally, give a patient example. Symptoms for Alzheimer's include a progressive loss of memory. This is usually one of the first signs of Alzheimer's. The inability to find the appropriate word to use in a sentence. Visual and or spatial issues. Impaired reasoning or judgment. A declining ability to make judgments or reasoning. And finally, the inability to perform familiar tasks. There is no known definitive cause for Alzheimer's. However, the disease appears to be linked to the degradation of brain proteins, resulting in the inability of brain neurons to function properly. As a result, neurons are damaged, lose connection to other neurons within the brain, and ultimately die. There are very few treatment options for Alzheimer's. Medications may temporarily improve or slow the progress of Alzheimer's disease, but there is no known cure or lasting treatment for Alzheimer's. Finally, let's take a look at a patient example. You receive your patient's file and take a look. Age, 52. Gender, female. Chief complaint, forgetfulness. You invite the patient into your office for an examination. Your patient explains that she's having a hard time remembering the names of clients when they come in for an appointment at her job. Additionally, she's having a difficult time remembering the location of certain keys on her computer keyboard. The family history, is unremarkable, except for her maternal uncle with dementia, who is 91 years old. The patient's physical and cognitive examination showed myelinemia, and the neurological exam showed a mild limb apraxia. Your patient performed normal and other cognitive tests, and you discussed early onset of Alzheimer's as a possibility. Two years later, your patient is reassessed and reports that the memory loss has worsened. She has stopped working because she could not complete her standard office tasks adequately. The neurological exam shows that the patient now has a buccolingual and limb apraxia, and she is performing below normal on other cognitive exams. A third reassessment occurs 15 months later, and your patient is forgetting conversations, can still dial familiar phone numbers, and has spatial disorientation in her apartment. She needs supervision and is not comfortable when left alone for even a short period of time. A CT scan is conducted and demonstrates the loss of brain mass for this patient and shows no other possible causes for these symptoms. 
This is a classic example of Alzheimer's disease. Want to see more 3D anatomy? Check out BodyViz 3D dissection software used to make this video and patient case study from a real patient's MRI and CT scan. Click the link on our page to learn more.